Wow. So that's all with the problem we're solving today. There's a lot of need to quantify the physical world today uh, from lots of different kinds of stakeholders. Um, you know, we just, it's just that people need data to optimize the physical world today because there's big challenges around that. Our cities are going to double their size within the next 35 years, which is, you know, 35 years, but the city level is a blip. And so there's huge challenges there for all stakeholders. But it's also that people just expect data now. We expect data, but the physical world, just like the data you have in the digital world, you expect to quantify everything. So there's a huge draft and huge need for that. So our bet is that video is the best platform to solve that problem at scale. Uh, and make it possible to measure everything that's going on in the physical world with lots of different applications. So, real quick, this is how it works under the hood, right? This is not what our customers see, but this is how it works, uh, you know, and this is the, uh, an illustration of our algorithms. On the top left side, you have a typical video we process, uh, which is a low resolution, pretty bad quality view of a, um, of a uh, city, of a street, right, street corner. Um, so the computer is going to analyze that. It's going to first look at the view and detect the road, the sidewalks, different elements of the scene automatically. And after that, it's going to start detecting elements, moving elements, and classifying them and tracking them. So we can basically detect and count all the vehicles, you know, you know see where people go if they enter that, that little cafe down there. Uh, we can count how many people are in there. Uh, we can count how many people cross that sidewalk. We can do a lot of different things with that pretty rich data. So, um, now the challenge was, of course, packaging that into a simple product, right? So, again, we're software, as you can see there. You know, this is really our DNA. The input is a video feed, right? A digital video feed that gets into our backend. And then all you need to do is point and show the computer what you want to detect and what you want to count. And the uh, third step is uh, just to get your data, right? So I, th I have a demo. Can I, can I quickly go there? I'll, I'll show you how this works live. Um, not, so this is uh, the kind of things you see on our, on our um, platform. Hold on. All right. There you go. So this is uh, just a, a snapshot of the view of any camera. This is a real time right now in uh, Penn Station. There we go, it's better. Um, so all you need to do is show the computer that you wanna, let's say, measure how many people cross that sidewalk there. So you just draw a line here, add it. It's free for now, just for us tonight. Um, and then all you need to do is go to your dashboard it's going to start counting in, in real time. So um, these are the real time counts. Here you can see the baseline and the actual. I want to show you what happened during the, um, the big snowstorm during Jonas. Um, this was the week before. There we go. All right. So here you can see typical traffic there. 2.30, Mayor de Blasio tells you ready to go home, everybody went home. So that's the kind of things you can do and you can get um, with our data. Hold on, let me get back to the presentation. All right, so uh, plenty of application. I promise not to pitch, so I won't show you everything, but retail, smart city, local governments, a lot of different people use that, right? And it's actually super easy to use and set up. So a lot of people who did not use that before now can, can, can use that too, like bicycle advocacy group, citizen groups, and things like that. So why did we get into hardware? Well, at some point, the premise of the company was to say, there's lots of videos everywhere. We don't need to build more video sensors. There's already a lot of them. All we need to do is access them. Well, simple retailers who have you know, some old security camera, they just don't know how to do that. They just don't know how to access the video feed. And they want something extremely simple to set up. They really have five minutes to set up a system like that. So and any camera wouldn't, wouldn't do the job. So we had to think of a new device that would basically solve different problems. Set up so you don't need to screw holes in the wall to put a new camera. 
set up had to be 2 per simple. Um, we wanted to have a pretty low requirement on bandwidth um, because most of the time retailers' Wi-Fi are bad or there's just no Wi-Fi. Um, so we had to solve all that and uh, we ended up thinking about building, building some, some hardware to do that actually. So that's why we, we built that little sensor. So Nick, you wanna show the real thing there? So we got into the process of thinking of deporting a part of our backend, because again, we think in terms of software. We want to have a little bit of the software running on the edge of the network to avoid having to transport videos on the network. And uh, we want to make that super easy to set up. So instead of uh, drilling holes, all you need to do is peel off the adhesive and put it on the window. Uh, it's actually designed to be stuck inside a, a um, retailer's window looking outside. It's really for storefront analytics. And uh, that's, what, that, that's what we made, basically. Um, yeah, so where was I? Here, okay. The sensor that's pretty robust, as you can see. <laughs> um, it, uh, it has a little camera inside, so this, this, is the, um, this is the way it works. There's a, a camera behind that uh, one-way mirror here. We can orient it this way uh, with a little ball here. And you just take it on the window using that, that is easy here. So once it's on the window, it's gonna count people passing by a store, uh, measure how long they stay in front of the store, see if they look at the, at the, at the storefront window and things like that. So all you need to do is plug it into the power and it's gonna to connect to a um, cellular network or Wi-Fi network. So, um, and all the, all the computing, that's the important part, happens on the center itself. All right, Nick, you wanna talk about, there you are. All right. <laughs> Sit down, you're good. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Nick. <laughs> Sorry about that, I should be fine now. Uh, so I actually lead the development for the sensor uh, at PlaceMeter. Um, so we're gonna give you a little bit of a technical deep dive. This is uh, gonna be pretty technical, but I hope some of it will be useful to you. Um, so really, as Alex explained, like we are kind of a cloud company, so anybody can stream their video to our backend in the cloud, and we really have to have that. We don't function if we're not a cloud company because there's so many video sensors already out there, we need to be able to leverage them. <laughs> But we get huge benefits from doing uh, the same thing at the edge on uh, the device directly on the sensor uh, because you eliminate a whole class of problems that you have with video streaming over the internet. So video streaming needs a lot of bandwidth, it needs stable internet connection, um, it's expensive, it's difficult to set up uh, if you need to configure your firewall. Um, so for a lot of customers, uh, it really is a much, much simpler and cheaper version uh, to have the computing on the edge on the sensor right here. So we came up, especially for you, with a new buzzword, um, and it's uh, really amazing. We call this clutch computing. Uh, yeah, don't confuse with clutch computing, uh, it's clutch computing. Uh, this is a little bit tongue in cheek, but really this is strategically super important for us. Uh, you can go on. Next slide. Look, coming. There you go. Um, because, so why is this actually really strategically important to us? So what's inside the sensor, it's actually a computer. It's a Raspberry Pi, so it's a single board computer. It's running a full distribution of Linux. Uh, in fact, it's running Raspbian, it's a Debian-based Linux distribution. And in the cloud, we run Ubuntu, which is also a Debian-based Linux distribution. So these systems are not very different. We can in many ways treat them uh, almost the same. We can treat the sensor really as a very direct extension of our backend. Uh, for us as a relatively early stage startup, this is a huge productivity boost. Uh, it means development is much easier. It's very easy for us to port code from one to the other. In fact, this was one of the easiest things of developing this sensor was just uh, porting our existing code uh, to this sensor. And uh, today we can move at the same rapid pace that we're used to and uh, we can be fairly comfortable that everything will just work on the sensor. So this is super important. Next slide. Uh, one back. 
Okay. Um, so one more little technical detail I think that I want to talk about that's um, potentially interesting, and we're doing something here that I really have not heard from many other people. Um, so software updates, it's a big, tricky topic. Um, we're, our DNA is more as a cloud company, so we're used to constantly making changes to our software and constantly deploying it, like multiple times per week is normal for us. Uh, but if you have a device like that, uh, deployments become much more difficult. So uh, how do we make that easy and possible? We want to be automatic, freaking and easy, right? So first, the actual software itself, uh, we package just with completely standard, boring, existing tools. So it's really important. Uh, we don't want to innovate in this area. We want to use just as much existing tools as possible. And we're a Python shop, so we package our software just completely standard, boring tools, uh, set up that Pi, pip, virtual env. In the Python world, these tools are used everywhere. Huge community, big support, nothing fancy at all. And uh, you know, if, if I want to make an analogy, what this is, is this is like the app. So if you have a phone, you install apps. Uh, these apps we package this way. But then there's another layer to it. So if you go to the next slide, um, your phone also has like system updates. Or more traditionally, with an IoT device, you would have a firmware that needs to be updated. Uh, so how do we deal with that? Again, um, we basically treat these devices almost like uh, production machines that are sitting somewhere in the cloud uh, at Amazon. Um, so there, traditionally, uh, you would use uh, configuration management tools. Uh, so configuration management tools are tools that generally allow you to maintain, configure, uh, and update whole clusters of machines. Uh, so there's a, lot, a few big players. The biggest are Puppet Chef and SaltStack. Um, we decided we're going to use Puppet for kind of arbitrary reasons, really. Um, but what this allows us to do is we can distribute arbitrary system changes very easily uh, to all the sensors that we have deployed out there. Um, and it doesn't require us to, for example, do a full update of the complete image uh, that's on the sensor. So this would be impossible, essentially, because some of these sensors are using GSM, which is a very slow connection, very expensive bandwidth. Uh, but this way, we can make any changes we want. What else? Um, so this is super flexible. Uh, this is great. We can do as many changes we want, as, as often as we want to. However, also, this uh, gives us a lot of ways how we can shoot ourselves in the foot. Um, so it's just important if you try to do this um, that you put process in place that all these system configuration changes need to be properly tested. They need to do, go to a QA process. Um, yeah. And I think that's everything. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Nick. So basically for us, again, coming from a pure software and platform background, it was important to uh, consider our device as an extension of the platform as opposed to designing the device and the platform separately. Quick word to um, finish, yeah, yeah. So uh, when we started in 2012, um, you know, VCs, our tech you know, colleagues, everybody was looking at the company, was always asking us, are you hardware or software? Um, and back then, it was actually you know, not that common uh, to do both. Uh, so we decided to make the bets that hardware, manufacturing, design, all the processes were mature enough uh, to get to the point where you know, dumb software people could actually make uh, complex hardware. Because for some reason, hardware people are allowed to do software, but not the other way around. Well, that, that's over. So um, just um, six just uh, takeaways from uh, that experience. It, you can do it, it works. Uh, don't use 3D printers. Uh, <laughs> we thought that 3D printers, you know, easy PCB manufacturing would be uh, super easy for us to, uh, to make these devices. No, that's what we get in the morning most of the time. Um, be simple in your design, extremely simple. Occam's razor, right? Whatever has a couple of components less is a better solution than the other one. Uh, and use off-the-shelf components. This helps for um, uh, manufacturing, for sourcing, for uh, uh, all the certification and everything. 
And I mean, we talked about that earlier, but time is a different notion when you do hardware than when you do software. So just be prepared for that. That's it. So we made 200 uh, sensors for the first batch. Uh, we sold them out in two days, so that was not enough. Um, <clears throat> the original batch was made partly in China, partly in Europe. Uh, that created a lot of uh, delays and complications in the, in the overall process. So we, we brought all the molds, everything back to Europe, and everything is now built within a 10 mile radius around Paris. So that makes the whole thing a lot faster. So now it's gonna take us about a month to produce a thousand uh, more of these. Where they are deployed originally was mostly for retailers. Uh, it turns out that a lot of people were creative about these sensors. Just give you an example, the other day we monitor what's going on and what people look at just to make sure everything works well. The other day we saw one sensor pointing at the sky. We're like, oh, we should contact that guy, the sensor fell. But no, the guy actually drew a line in the sky and was counting planes. So uh, I don't know why, but it works. So, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I would say that about 25% of these sensors are not with retailers, but for, for example, we have uh, seven of them that are gonna be deployed in, uh, around the MIT campus um, to monitor foot traffic, vehicle traffic, and things like that. So, but your first question, I think it's probably related to the second two. We are very conscious about privacy. We're very, very focused on staying uh, at the counting level, not identification level. So everything that's around engaging with customers, recognizing people, we don't do that. We stay away from that. We read a passive uh, counter, uh, and you know, it does a little more than counting, it analyzes behavior. We can recognize some things about age or gender, or yeah, behavior, like how fast people go, do they walk straight and very quickly, in which case they're probably commuters, or do they walk slower, or do they walk in groups, and things like that. That's the kind of level we get, we get into. <clears throat> right, so uh, you mentioned the example of a person who uh, accidentally aimed his camera up in the sky because he might want to actually count vehicles in there. Uh, so I was thinking about, well, you guys have a certain model of um, measuring the pedestrian in the cars in the street, and it can definitely go anywhere in any direction. Um, what I'm thinking about is uh, what are your next steps beyond right now? We have Yeah, that's a great point, and that was actually um, a choice you made at the beginning also. We, uh, we decided to, um, when somebody makes something in the public space, we're gonna make it available to other people, right? A card sometimes, sometimes for free, if it's a, if it's a nonprofit. Uh, there's a clear collaborative aspect, right? If I measure my tree corner, you measure yours, we're better off sharing that. So uh, there's nothing built in the product today, but in terms of license of the data, we, we allow for that. And that's definitely one of the things we want to do in the future um, to you know, leverage that local network effect around you know, measuring and quantifying the physical world together.
Thank you.